Over the weekend, thousands of Texas Republicans declared such hateful anti-gay, anti-women's rights, anti-children's safety, and big light backing official declarations that they have somehow managed to move even further to the alt-right and out-maga themselves. The delegates at the three-day convention approved a resolution officially rejecting the certified results of the 2020 presidential election, declaring that President Joe Biden was, quote, not legitimately elected. They took their MAGA alt-right empowerment even further, publicly declaring their support for Texas's state sovereignty and self-government, including pushing changes to the Electoral College, Texas's right to secede from the United States of America and for the state legislature to appoint U.S. senators. Joining us now, Tim Miller, writer at large at The Bulwark, and Matt Dow, political strategist, also the founder of Country Over Party. Both are MSNBC contributors. Matt Dow is a Texan. So Texas wants to secede. Is this the point where we say to the alt-right in Texas, okay? Is this for me, the Texan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, uh, I, what I'd like to say, and I was listening to the previous conversation and why these two things are so connected, I think, because what happened in, in, in Texas was it wasn't just a stampede of 5,000 crazy longhorns at the George R. Convention Center, George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston. They, they basically are showing in Texas that if we don't hold accountable as, this, as democracy is demanded, dismantled, Texas is showing what they're going to do if that happens. If democracy is dismantled, this is what happens. And it is full, it's vivid, it's clear in this. I mean, this idea of seceding, they, they asked for a referendum out of the legislature. It's, it's this crazy sect of people in this, but obviously it would be stupid for the Republicans to do that. There's 40 electoral votes in Texas. They have a plus 12 or 13 advantage in the congressional seats. They have two U.S. senators. It would basically be Let's make America dem let's make America, America democratic, and we'll secede out of that. Not the least of which, Texas also gets more federal dollars than it gives in in tax dollars. They don't add that into the in the way of this. But it, to me, it's a complete signal of this has nothing anymore to do with Donald Trump. The 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 crazy has been let loose. This is who the Republican Party is fundamentally is fundamentally. There are a few exceptions, as we've talked about numerous times. They are the unicorns in the Republican Party. But Texas is showing if you don't hold January 6th accountable and we don't hold the Republicans accountable in the fall, Texas is showing this is what they want America to look like. I, I think there's another thing about it that's really important nationally for not just Democrats, but Republicans who wrestle with it, their own party's anti-democratic impulses. It's not hyperbole to call the Republican Party um, sort of in in bed with aut autocratic practices and to describe the Republican Party's thought leaders as autocrats in waiting. And the, the piece of it that I think is revealing and the piece that should be ominous when you look at how voter integrity laws, which are voter suppression laws masquerading as election security laws because there was no fraud, just ask Bill Barr, um, is, is, is this, Tim, the, the, the Texas GOP platform is insane. This is Paul Waldman, Waldman of The Washington Post. He writes, but the piece that jumped out at me was the endorsement of a state level electoral college, eliminating one person, one vote in favor of the system. They yeah. could gerrymander so the votes of white rural Republicans will count more. This is what Texas has already done in the state legislature. This is what they, they shut down to try to, um, to Jasmine Crockett and others. But this mainstreaming of anti-democratic practices, not just rhetoric, is, is for me one of the more ominous things that happened, Tim. Yeah, there's a lot of ominous down there. And it's not just Texas, right? Uh, even in more purple states, right? If you look at like Wisconsin, for example, uh, you know, the way that they gerrymandered their state assembly and state, uh, you know, state legislature, excuse me, is, uh, you know, not at all akin to kind of what the breakdown should be of a 50 50 state. That's why, you know, when if, if they, if a Republican governor defeats Tony Evers this time, uh, Wisconsin is going to, despite being a purple state, Joe Biden won, institute Texas style uh, extreme policies on a range of issues. So, uh, you know, I think this is definitely a concern across the country, not just in Texas. Uh, the other ominous part of, of the Texas uh, thing to me is just how in bed 
the people that run the state of Texas are with these act- activists. I, they're completely simpatico. I, you know, this is not look. We've as, as, it's a tale as old as time, and we probably should have seen this as a red flag. But you know, in 2008, when when a, a, a red state convention would 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 put out an extreme platform, you'd say, well, I mean, John McCain though is for immigration reform and cap and trade, right? So there's this distance between the candidates and the activists that should have been a red flag to us. But that distance doesn't exist anymore. I, you know, Dan. Yeah. Patrick and Greg Abbott and Ken Paxton are extreme. And so when the Texas legislature says that being gay is abnormal, and then the Texas government says, oh, wait, teachers who talk about their their same-sex relationships and their gay families in class can be punished, and they already are in certain school districts in Texas. That is the real ominous part for me. I, the, the extreme stuff is being operationalized by the actual people in charge in Texas, and, and that cannot get lost here. This is not just a few random extreme crazy activists. Matt Dowd, this is my question. I mean, on um, vigilante enforcement of an anti-abortion, a ban on all abortions in the state of Texas, on the, the, the I mean, the in, sort of codifying in their platform, the anti-gay rhetoric, it is, it is not anything we've seen really in modern political discourse, into Tim's point, mainstreamed. Why don't Texas business leaders reject these Republican politicians? How can you recruit workers to work in a state like Texas? Well, I think a number of business leaders have gone have gone out of their way. Not enough, obviously, to stand up. I mean, there's how many? I think there's as many Fortune 500 companies in Texas as there is in as is in, in New York these days. <laughs> Texas has an abundance of wealth. The second wealthiest country, a uh, second wealthiest state in the country, um, it would be a, the economy of Texas would be, a, I think, ninth in the world. I think they have; they just haven't stepped up. And I think every time, I think it's this this error that people keep making, which is first, it's like, oh, Donald Trump, he's not going to get elected. He doesn't really represent. Then he gets elected. Oh, everybody else isn't like Donald Trump. The, the adults in the Republican Party will take care of it. They don't take care of it. Oh, that if we can just get past these X, Y, and Z, we'll be okay. And I think whoever it is, whether it's American Airlines or oil companies or whatever, I think this idea that that these Republicans, like they're taking care of us right now, every sign should point to them that every time they think they're a friend, they're coming for you next. I mean, the first people in line are all of the traditionally historically discriminated against groups. They're going to take those down the list. And then as Governor DeSantis has shown, he's willing to go after Disney. He's willing to go after the sports stadiums. He's willing to go after whatever. And I think the business community, who obviously they have to play ball because it's a completely red state. There's not a single Democratic elected statewide. I think they understand and have unease about it. They think they can just get past this and then it'll be okay. What they don't realize is, and the convention this week in Texas should show, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse.